MEC Panyaza Sufi visiting that school following reports that the college sent out a newsletter to parents informing them that pupils should return to school today. Let's uh, take a listen in. Over the weekend, I was flooded with reports that there are schools that believe they should go ahead uh, with, with, with the reopening of schools. We sensed danger, and we felt that we can't just persuade the public education system. We need to also persuade the private education systems. And the reasons are simple. They're in the same communities with everyone. Their parents are going to buy textbooks. Their parents are going to buy school uniforms. They're going to be up and down. It's not about the capability of an institution to manage the virus, but the movement. Because the virus moves through movement. <coughs> so movement of people. So when we flooded that there are some institutions that are reopening, uh, one Sunday newspaper ran a story about uh, the school where we are. And I just felt that, let me come and visit the school. Maybe they've got a different reasoning uh, from what we have, from experts from the Department of Health and the team that is advising the Minister of Health. So we came here, and when I arrived here, uh, as I said, I was only welcomed uh, by the uh, principal, and the principal took me through that decision. But as a leader, you revisit your own decision. Uh, because the school, was already open by last week. Uh, so, so the reopening was not a defiant. They already opened. The decision came late. And when the information was brought to the attention by the advisor, Mr. Matthews, and our team in the province, <clears throat> yesterday they then reconsidered. And they felt that um, they should uh, migrate to online learning. Um, and it's only, I think you said, seven learners that are in the boarding facility that those are the seven learners that will remain purely because they need to use the gadgets and the facilities and they don't have them at home. Then we agreed, and, and that is why I felt that uh, we need to thank the leadership of the school. Then there are other schools. Uh, amongst the culprits, the school is an is a institution of schools called Curo. And I had a long discussion with the group CEO of Curo this morning. Almost an a 30 minutes di telephonic discussion. And after our discussions, we agreed that they also have to reconsider their decision. So they are going to issue a statement later this afternoon, um, and they are going to make a decision that will ensure that they retract the face-to-face -face, uh, contact. The only area where it's a gray area we're trying to find <clears throat> how to manage it <coughs> is the ECDs, or what is commonly known as crutches. Um, that's an area where we are discussing with Curo how to manage it. But you must also understand they've got learners that are coming from outside the country uh, in some of their facilities. We said we'll also discuss that matter. But they, the next two weeks, they must cease to teach. Uh, and they will issue a statement uh, to support that process. But they will do it in phases because they've already had a, a, a learners within their school premises. There was one school as well in Linesia um, uh, um, that also sent a communique. Uh, so this morning they've retracted that communique. Uh, so any other school, I don't mind other provinces, any other school, whether private, independent, or public, that is operating in Gauteng, the in defiance of the state. Uh, and if the in defiance of the state will persuade them to a certain limit, if they don't want to be persuaded beyond that limit, uh, unfortunately, we have to act. Um, and in acting, we'll find a mechanism within the law uh, to act appropriately. We are also in the process of writing to the minister that this decision to persuade schools to delay by two weeks must be gazetted uh, as quickly as possible. Because if you do that, then we've got the legal arm to act appropriately and deal with those that uh, don't want to. But from the reports I'm starting to receive, many people received this information from the minister very late. And because now they've accepted and received this information, they are starting to retreat and they're going to ensure that they comply to the two weeks delay. And we are not saying two weeks delay purely because we don't want our learners to 
uh, to learn. We've got expert views that this province in particular is under siege. And I think everyone knows this virus is devastating. It's causing undue pressure to all of us. It's causing undue pain. We are losing friends. We are losing relatives. We are literally losing everyone around us. And the virus is amongst ourselves. So this virus is no longer somewhere in China. It's amongst ourselves. Uh, and the best way to manage this virus is to minimize movements. And if we can minimize movements, we really believe that we'll win this battle against this virus. So any school that is still reopened or any school that is operating now, uh, we really want to persuade them and take this opportunity to say it's not about the capability or ability of children to spread the disease. It's about the movement uh, that will happen. And we know this virus gets excited when there's a lot of movements amongst all of us. And that's the reason why we are persuading them to also retreat for two weeks. We'll monitor the situation. Experts will advise us. And when the experts have given us relevant information to reopen, we'll indeed reopen. But if experts say we must re uh, the school must remain closed, we'll also communicate that decision. And hopefully uh, we'll be in a position to resolve whatever that needs to be resolved. Those that are online, there's nothing wrong, principal, as I said. Uh, those who want to migrate online, there's nothing wrong, you can migrate online. Uh, but unfortunately, that's the history of our country. It perpetuates those inequalities, uh, but it's something that will sort it out. We are bringing on institutions that can close the gap, like broadcasters, so that some of the lessons can be uh, 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 conducted uh, using our television sets or radio stations, uh, so that uh, some learners are not left behind, purely because uh, they're not going to be in a position to be online or they don't have the resources uh, for, for, for them to continue learning uh, online. So once more, principal, thanks for your cooperation, thanks for, for your understanding, and we truly, truly appreciate uh, the relationship that uh, will develop from now on. Uh, I was saying to the principal, uh, I'm excited about this school. It looks very beautiful. Uh, and the principal indicated this school is 100 years old, actually. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's something that you need to to appreciate as well. Thank you. Principal, you can, you can <coughs> add your... Yeah, I just would like to say that um, in an <coughs> ever-changing world with a pandemi pandemic, the uh, are always more questions than answers. And on Friday, with the information we had, we made decisions that we revisited over the weekend and we changed it. We communicated very direct and very quick to our parents and we made independently the decision that we will not bring our learners back today just to make sure that the, the risks, and I don't want to expose them to anything, and we'll start with online teaching from tomorrow. But I just would like to state that we were open last week and we had to readjust and make new plans. Thank you. Thanks. You get it, simple. Don't worry. You want to sort of tell the, the name? My name? Yeah. Mr. Koenig, K O N I G. Koenig is the king. <laughs> That's German. Yeah? It's German. Yeah. It's the king. <laughs> okay. I don't feel like a king. Okay. <laughs> Klaus, Klaus. Yeah. first name is Klaus. Klaus. Okay. Uh, uh, some clarity there on what has happened at this particular school. That's Health Macau College in Bramfontein. The principal uh, there just clarifying that they were open last week and with the information they received on Friday during that briefing from the Basic of Education, uh, from the Department of Basic Education, then decided to um, sort of change those plans. So they will be start with online tomorrow. Pupils not required to come to school from this week. But also what we're hearing from MEC there, Panyaza Lasufi in Gauteng, saying that any schools, clarifying for us, any schools, whether you are public or a private school operating at the moment, you are bound by the law, you should not have pupils at school at the moment. Normal teaching only commences on the 15th of February. Even then, 
uh, they will be advised as to how they will proceed from then. Experts will advise as well, the MEC is saying. He says they will also act against any school found to be operating uh, against that directive and will ask for that directive uh, that we received from the department to be gazetted as well. He says other schools that also issued the same sort of directives to their pupils have withdrawn that. Nobody will be at school. Those who choose to continue with online schooling can continue to do so. But he did say even though uh, that this perpetuates uh, inequality in our country, but those that actually want to go online can go online and saying also that they will uh, bring in broadcasters to help uh, those pupils who have no access to online facilities so that they do not get left behind. But that, of course, still in the planning stages. And uh, that's what's happening there at the moment. Help Macar College in Bramfontein will not be operating as normal.